Welcome back. In this video, we'll see the first verification point that is data verification point. As the name says, this verification point will revolve around the data. Now, verification points are also known as checkpoints sometimes in another softwares. So if you get somewhere as checkpoints or verification points, do not get confused. They both are one and the same. Let us see an example. I have this classic CDA application where there are different types of data available for the radio button data or you can say as a full name drop down data. So in this full name drop down, there are almost 19 elements. If I click on this drop down, I'll be getting 19 elements with different data. Okay. Now what happens is every fortnight, that is every 15 days, developers gives me a new build. Okay. In that build, he has made some modifications. So for example, one modification is he earlier it was 19 elements. The next 15 days, developer gave me a build where there were 25 elements. They have added six more elements. Now, if I am doing a functional testing, definitely it will be difficult for me to keep a track on the count of the data here. Okay. So verification point is one concept which will do my task easier, which will help me to keep my scripts in proper place. So what this verification point is, it will keep a track on this particular data tab or you can say as this particular data field itself. Okay, this will do. Why it is done and what it can be used. Imagine there is one changes made in the software like this one, adding of elements. There is a high possibility that changes made in this module might impact the other modules. So this is a concept known as regression testing. So it will help me to reduce the regression testing defects. Okay, so you can have a look on this. So regression testing is a type of software testing that ensures that the previously developed software is in the same state. Okay, it still performs the same way after any modifications or it has been changed or interface with other software. So it will keep a track on if you add some elements, if you delete some elements, if you change the height width of the application. So these are some regression testing techniques, but mostly we'll be focusing on this data itself. Okay, so data verification point. Now, when we are going for a practical, let me give you what are the things we'll be following in this data verification? What are the points we'll follow? First thing is we'll start recording a script. While recording, what we'll do is we'll insert a data verification point and we'll stop the recording. So these three steps are normal, what we have done previously. But after that, what we'll do is we'll just replay the process. Definitely we'll get the answer as pass because we are not making any changes. Now I'll be getting the answer as pass. After that, what I'll do is I'll just modify the verification data point. Okay. In that, I'll just try to change the elements and I'll try to compare the expected versus actual. So obviously if I'm just trying to play with it, if I try to modify, I'll be getting the answer as false or you can say as fail answer. Okay. So then we'll just replay and get the answer as fail. When we get the answer fail in the verification point comparator, I can just identify how much is expected and how much is the actual one. Okay. So let us see practically how we work on this data verification point. All right. Here I'll record a new script in that particular script while recording. I'll try to insert data verification point. Let's go ahead. I'll click on this record button and I'll give the name of the script as E underscore data. verification point and click on finish button here the rft window will get minimized i'll start the application that's the same classic java I. click on ok now this window appears i'll select some uh, cd from here let's say i'll select a symphonies click on place order and now i'll get a member logon dialog box what i'll do is i want to insert a data verification point on this full name combo box so here there are so many items total. There's a count of 19 elements. If you see Trent, Susan, Emma. So if you keep on counting these numbers, these are 19, you know, names which are given. How do I come to know? Because previously I've worked on this uh, application. So therefore I know this. So what I can do is now, if I want to insert data verification point on this trend, or you can say as full name combo box, go to the recording toolbar. See the fourth option on the toolbar, it says insert verification point or action command. So I'll click on that button and I'll get a dialog box. This dialog box is verification point dialog box. There are three methods for selection because if you want to select any test object, there are three methods. Drag and selection, which is widely used, test object browser, time delayed selection. So we'll work on drag and selection. 
it is a bit tedious to select an object using this drag and selection but that's the most and widely used this option here how do i select that object you can see that's an object finder you have to press your left key of your mouse and then do not leave it keep your cursor move your mouse till you get a highlighted red border on that object and once you get the red highlighted border leave your mouse okay when you leave your mouse you'll be jumping to the next page okay this page is asking you to select which verification point you want there are four verification point one is data verification properties verification specific property value weight command and then image verification so right now in this video i'll show you how to work on data verification point select data verification point click on next button here this dialog box will ask you a few more questions if i click on the drop down it will ask you what data value you want to keep a track on one is the list elements and second is only selected list element right now the selected list element is trend kalpito so i don't want only selected i want all the list elements present in that combo box what is the name of the verification point you want to give so i'll give the name as name combo underscore vp or i'll say as name combo one that's very easy now if you see there's a include retry parameters maximum retry time 20 seconds retry interval 2 seconds now why this retry time is given here now let's take an example if you have uh, if you're trying to test a web-based application uh, depending upon your internet connection the application will open let's say if i'm trying to test facebook yahoo or gmail okay on my laptop if i have a very fast speed of internet it will open within few seconds let's say three seconds on your laptop if it is very slow it might open in 10 seconds so what is the time gap i have to give so here if you observe at the bottom maximum retry time that is given as 20 seconds because because of the internet connection i have to give some time gap same way for web or you can say as windows application or java application it will depend upon your pc configuration if it is taking lot of time for the application to load i'll ask my rft rational functional tester to wait for particular time or certain amount of time what is that certain amount of time that is 20 seconds okay maximum retry time 20 seconds what is the retry interval retry interval is basically two seconds that means every two seconds it will try to find out that object okay find out that particular object what the, what is the object here that is a combo box in my case so retry interval two seconds this is by default this is the question which is asked in the com or you can say as the certification exams what is the maximum retry time and retry interval that is a default one if you want you can modify this include retry parameters so right now it is not required i'll simply click on next button now we have selected the object okay and now i've got all the list of elements here if you see i have got element count on the left hand side which is 19 and what are those 19 elements on the right hand side you're getting the list of all the names which are given now it is not necessary you want to keep a track on all 19 elements you can keep a track on five elements six elements so you see a checkbox which is given you can select and deselect whichever you want okay so i want all of the elements so you can select this checkbox which says check all so now i'll keep a track on all the 19 elements why it is required suppose the developer is giving me a new build let's say classic java b application in that build he is adding 20 elements a total 20 names are given whereas in the previous version what i recorded was 19 elements so rft will automatically tell me what is the extra element which is added okay usually we don't get a time to just click on the drop down and keep on counting the spellings or counting the names and check the spellings so rft will do it for me okay so right now 19 elements click on finish so verification point is added i'll click on ok button and now just for the namesake i'll keep on doing some other steps like the card number and the expiration date click on place order okay and i'll click on close button stop the uh, recording here now let me show you what is the verification point added how will you come to know there are two methods by which you can identify here in the script if you observe name combo perform test name combo one that was the name of the 
a verification point and VP is given by RFT which stands for verification point. Okay, so this is one line by which you can understand that verification point is added into the script. On the right hand side in the script explorer, this is the script explorer. So here if you see in the verification points, there's given as name combo one. So name combo one, you remember we have just added the verification point. If I just double click on name combo, I'll get a dialog box, this dialog box, which says verification point editor. Okay, here you can modify, add, delete, or change anything if you want. Right now, I don't want to modify. I'll simply click on close. Okay, it is possible to add multiple verification point in the same test, right? So what we have done is basically we were recording while recording. I have added data verification point. Stop the recording. That's it. Now I'll just simply execute. Click on this run button and click on finish. Execution has started and you can see whatever steps are displayed in the playback monitor. Everything would be executed step by step. Now, uh, if the object is found within one second for a verification point, it will not wait more than one second. Okay. So that means you remember there were retry or you can say as maximum retry time 20 seconds. So it will only wait for 20 seconds. If the object is not found, you see maximum retry time. There's nothing given as minimum. If it is able to find within one second, it will go in one second for the next step. Two seconds, it will go within two seconds. So that was maximum retry time. Now, the uh, execution has been done. The result has been showing as pass. Okay. And here, if you see verification point has passed. So there's nothing to be shown here. Everything is passed here. Okay. Now, if I show you in the events tab, if I click on this name combo verification point, you see name combo one, which has been passed. And if you want to see the details, which is given here, right? The details also have been mentioned here. Now, since it has passed, let me go to this tab that is data verification point or Java, right click on that. And I'll click on close others. I'll just keep this window open, rest all closed. Now that was simple record in playback inserted verification point. What I'll do is I'll try to make some changes in the verification point. Double click on this name combo on the right hand side here, instead of Trent, the first name is given as Trent. Instead of Trent, I'll type here as my name, Pavan Lalwani. And the last one, you see, there's a given as P I'll click on this plus sign. That means I'm trying to insert one more value here. Okay. Which is empty. So total elements. Now, if you count is 20, the name has been changed. Now I'll click on close, click on yes. That means save the changes. Obviously, when I execute this script, it will fail. There might be reasons. One is the name change. Second is extra element added. Let us see practically whether RFT is able to find out. Okay. Now in this thing, what I've done is I have changed the expected result. Okay. This here in this place in RFT scripts, I have changed the expected result. Why not? I can change the actual result because I'm not a developer and I don't have a code. I don't have access to the code for this sample application. Therefore, at the max, I have only this script, which I can change. Let us go ahead and click on this run button. Click on finish. I'll click on yes, because the log already exists. It was asking, do you want to overwrite? I said yes. So let's wait for the execution to get over. Right. So execution has started and the steps which I mentioned have been executed. So execution has been done. I'm expecting the result as failed. And here you can see, which is given as 8.3 result uh, is been failed. Let me go back to events and maximize that thing. And if you see in the name combo box here, it says it has been failed. Okay. Now why it has been failed. Let us try to find out. Okay. Uh, here, if you see, there are two snapshots, which have been displayed. Okay. But we have a separate option to understand on the left hand side in the functional test project. In the project one log, 
we have e underscore data verification point that's the name of the log if i expand here you'll see there's a double zero double zero dot name combo one if i double click on this name combo one in the log file you can see the name of this window is verification point comparator comparator as the name says it will compare expected versus actual so this column is the expected and this column is for the actual one here you can see the name change which have been highlighted in red color at the bottom if you see i have added extra uh, you know record before uh, the second last record which was there here expected was nothing but i've got as p here expected was p but i've got as null okay so this is the difference which i found out also if you see here on the left hand side the total item count which was expected was 20 and the actual element which i'm getting as 19 so that is the difference which i found out okay so i can just click on this close dialog box okay and i can just go back to my uh, verification point script itself right so this is the method by which you can keep on adding a data verification point to your script we have seen how to make it pass okay we didn't do any changes definitely and if i want to make it fail i have just modified the expected result and i've got the fail answer right i hope you have understood data verification point that's all for this video tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning